Former Rhode Island Congressman Patrick Kennedy is the founder of Smart Approaches to Marijuana, or Project SAM, a campaign to keep marijuana illegal and educate the public about the truth of the drug. And according to the Yahoo Marist poll, it shows that m most Americans now think that marijuana should be more uh, accepted and normalized in society. Why do you disagree with that? Well, I'm proud to have been the author of the Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act, which means that the insurance industry now has to pay for addiction and mental illness coverage in a way they never were required to prior to that. We're trying to enforce this law across the country, and it seems to me like there's an elephant in the room because while we're trying to get improved mental health care, while we're trying to address the opiate crisis in this country, while we're trying to uh, address the suicide rate in this country, we have this legalization effort which has profound consequences on the public health of our country. And it was incongruent for me to be pushing better mental health for our nation's citizens on the one hand and to be ignoring this new phenomenon, which is the march towards the new big uh, tobacco. It's the new mm -hmm. marijuana industry, which, like the tobacco industry, has only one thing in mind, uh, profits. And they profit off of people being addicted, mm -hmm. uh, much like the alcohol industry where, you know, you're not you're supposed to drink responsibly but that's not how they make their money they make their money off of people like me who are alcoholics because we drink far in excess of what is appropriate drinking and that's where their profits come from uh, we we still pay a heavy price for um, you know the the consequences of alcohol uh, and alcoholism in this country the you know, cost to emergency rooms, to society as a whole. But we've got alcohol. You know, mm. there's no putting that horse back in the barn. Uh, we if it were up to you, I, should, What should I would we? say is we would regulate it a lot more effectively. But here's the problem. What happened with alcohol is going to happen with marijuana. And that is when it becomes too big money, when you've got Anheuser-Busch with lobbyists for every state rep in the country and five lobbyists per member of Congress, it's impossible to impose any kind of moderate restrictions and regulations in terms of the advertising of alcohol. I mean, we're even seeing the advertising of hard liquor now on cable mm -hmm. stations. Now, this is unthinkable when you think about the impact of this on our society, but it's a sign that you can't push back against an industry so wealthy and so powerful as the liquor industry. And all I'm saying is, why do we want to repeat the mistakes there? We say we're going to regulate it, but of course, once it gets going, it's impossible to rein in. It's true also with pharma. We saw Purdue Pharma oversell these Oxycontins, and what do we get? We got a heroin epidemic, because now that we're restricting the sale of pills, people are going to the street. We don't need to imagine what's going to happen with marijuana. All we need to do is look at what's happened with liquor, look at what's happened with prescription drugs. And as a country, do we need more intoxication? I, I just don't think it's good for our country. I want to get to the prescription drugs and opioid crisis in a moment. But what is it that you know as an addict that people who have responded to this survey don't? Well, no, I About think... About marijuana. First of all, we know that it's not the marijuana of even my generation or previous generations. We're talking about a marijuana with much higher THC levels than ever before. Plus, you have these e-cigarettes, and, and it's also edible. And, and these gummy bears, it's also, uh, you can drink it. It's in like these uh, elixirs is what they call it. So you don't it. just have to smoke at it. No, no. Most of the people who probably responded to your survey imagine someone doing a couple bong hits or smoking a, a couple of joints, you, right. right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about an industry that's mass producing these THC candy bars, that's mass producing these grape sodas loaded with THC. I guarantee you, if you ever showed the audience that did this poll what this looks like, it's got nothing to do with what's in their head, a couple of joints and a, and a bong hit, guaranteed. 
So what happens? Right now, you've got Wall Street backing a new corporate investment. And what are they investing in? Addiction. They're not investing in a couple of people on their leisure on a weekend a month, you know, in their privacy of their own home. They're talking about investing in a product that's going to be more plentiful than Starbucks. That's what these pot shots are in, in Colorado and Seattle. So we just have to hold our horses and understand there are going to be enormous consequences to us giving the green light to a whole new industry that's founded upon addiction. The Should brain it be is, used medicinally? Do you agree with that? We have something called Marinol. It's FDA approved. I am all for a marijuana products that are able to be treat certain types of diseases to go through the FDA process and get approved. Right now, no one knows what they're buying, mm. right? That can be a hazard to public health. If, if someone needs, you know, the, the beneficial effects of the, some component in this plant, then we know what to do. It, it, we don't eat uh, willow bark from a tree. We buy aspirin. We have a process for doing that. It's called FDA. The reason we do is we want to protect the public's health. We're doing nothing of the sort by just calling it a blanket sense medicine. There are people with their medicine cards who are going in there using it for all kinds of disorders, so to speak, that have nothing to do in any medical sense to treating the things that may actually be medicinal. So uh, this is another example of, you know, that concept of medicinal purpose as being really a Trojan horse to get people to use. Because mm. the very same people who are selling you the fact that this is for they medicine. Like, they like that it's being associated with medicine. Yeah, and it, 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 de it de-escalates the sense of worry and, you know, uh, consequences of using marijuana. Because if it's used for medicine, well, there's nothing wrong with it. So I think Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to learn our lesson until it's too late. Because frankly, think, you think it will? We're on the path. This of thing is on the fast track, and it's being the the we've greased the skids with money like you can't believe. The public health doesn't stand a chance in this fight because we're up against money that is going to continue to grow as this industry spreads. What do you say to those who argue that, as you brought up alcohol earlier, that, that, are, that alcohol has far more deadly consequences and addictive consequences than marijuana? I don't disagree with that. that two wrongs don't make a right. That's the fa faulty logic that the opponent says, oh, well, alcohol's worse. Why don't you do something about that? Well, alcohol's already legal, and there's no putting that horse back in the barn. Let's stop this horse from getting out of the barn. It, you know, it's a question, well, what floor do they drop you from? The 10th floor or the 4th floor? You're, You're still, still in trouble. And, and people can downplay the impact of marijuana, but it's on kids that I'm most concerned about because it's the developing brain. Um, this is a very important formative time of the brain development. And for kids to be exposed to this high concentration of THC while their adolescent brain is starting to develop, we know already that this has detrimental effects. Why in a nation where we're so challenged with how to cope with stress, how to deal with the complexities of this world, would we want to affect the brain, the most important organ in our body, which mediates motivation, cognition, um, its sentiments, it's everything that makes us who we are. And I don't think it's good for our public health to be polluting the most important thing that we have going for I us. I want to get back to the poll because it also found that 47% of parents who use weed say they have consumed marijuana in front of their adult ch children, shared it with them, or done both. You have young children yourself. How do you feel about that statistic? Well, what I find troubling is that, you know, when I was growing up, fetal alcohol syndrome, the number of babies born to alcoholic mothers, uh, was always the single largest source of intellectual disability. And my family, having started Special Olympics and the National Institute for Children and Human Development, named after my aunt, we care about intellectual disabilities and preventing them. And the most preventable way of uh, interceding and preventing intellectual disabilities is to address a mother's alcoholism before that ends up poisoning her baby. 
Same can be said for opiates, because now we're seeing a sharp increase in the number of opiate-addicted babies. And the same is going to be true with marijuana. There are going to be profound consequences. Now, just take for a fact, we have X number of people using today, and we know that a certain percentage of them are going to be subject to addiction. Not all, but let's just say 20% of those who use have a higher risk for developing an addiction to marijuana. Well, if you do 100x, you're making it 100x to the 20% that are prone to addiction, meaning by your logic, you're clearly going to see an increased number of people with the disease of addiction to marijuana. So what I'm saying is, does this really make sense if we know that not only are going to be people who are going to be more at risk for addiction, but also mental illness? There are strong indicators that psychosis due to the hallucinogenic effects of THC, um, this, this can precipitate psychosis in those with the predisposition to schizophrenia. We know this. This is not news. This has been documented. Research, so yes. all I'm saying is even if that's a small percent, and uh, we as a nation are trying to tackle this opiate epidemic over here and trying to tackle all these other challenges with mental illness over here, why would it make sense for us to pour gasoline on the fire and introduce a new addictive substance with strong effects on mental health and on addiction. It just, common sense tells me that's not a smart thing for our country. Let me ask you something about the state of Rhode Island, which you represent, the Department of Health in that state, like so many other across the country, has declared that drug overdoses are a public health crisis for the state. The number of deaths continue to rise. The cause of these deaths, though, is more related directly to opioid abuse than to marijuana. So what do you think can be done as far as including marijuana, which you think should be part of this discussion? Because statistically, at least from the numbers, we're not seeing that evidence right now. So what I worry about is marijuana sapping the motivation and really the cognition of our young people. So they might not end up on a, on a slab because they OD'd on fentanyl because they were originally addicted to Oxycontin. But their lives may end up becoming permanently disabled, essentially. They're missing in action. They're not killed in action. They're missing in action. So I don't like the idea that we somehow attribute, well, there's less to worry about because, well, these people, they may be stoned, but they're not dying. Mm. I just think that's negative thinking. I don't think we should really relish the thought that any American is kept from their full God-given potential. Congressman, thank you so much for your time and thank your you. candor today. Thank you.